Now we can see all the cards from Skolomance Academy, and there's a lot to cover. There's a whole other mechanic to the set we haven't looked at, a couple ways to generate extra minions, and an awesome new type of combo enabler. Let's get started. Huh, this should be interesting. In our first couple reviews, we explained how our review criteria differ from others. There's a card above linking to review number two if you'd like to hear the explanation for how we analyze each card. There's a time code for quick reviews with puns in the description below for those of you without much time. For everyone else, let's get into the main reviews. To start off this review, let's look at the new mechanic that was introduced. Just like Paladins got the Librem package for Ashes of Outland, Warlocks and Demon Hunters get a Soul Fragment package. A Soul Fragment is a zero cost card that heals your hero for two, which certain other cards will shuffle into your deck, similar to the Shadows which Shadow of Death shuffles into your deck. These cast when drawn, so you'll get the effect in addition to drawing another card. We'll start by looking at the Warlock and Demon Hunter dual class cards, which shuffle soul fragments into your deck. First up is Spirit Jailer, a 1 mana 1-3 one demon with a battle cry to shuffle 2 soul fragments into your deck. 1 mana 1-3 one minions have a history of being really powerful in the past, and this has a major upside of healing you later, or working with one of the other synergy cards, so it looks pretty exciting. The demon tag helps it have synergy in both classes, and philosophy, which we covered in a previous review, is a great way to squeeze some extra value out of him. Now in the current meta, soul fragments don't exist, and unless we include most or all of the package, it probably wouldn't make sense to run this right now. Though a 1-3 demon that heals for 4 later on in the game might be enough to merit this a spot in Zoo Warlock, even without the rest of the package. With Magic Carpet? Never mind, this would be a meta now card! <laughs> and with its natural fit in Zoo, as well as the strength of the rest of the Soul Fragment package, I feel pretty confident to say that this will find its way into one of the top three tier decks in the new meta as well. As for meme deck potential, there are some fun things we can do with this and Augmented Elec or Brand's Bronzebeard in Wild, getting ridiculous value from it but Standard is a bit more challenging to go crazy with this. However, the last card we'll look at has quite the payoff for having a lot of fragments in your deck, so we'll run this in a deck with Youthful and Ancient Brewmaster to get even more absurd value from it. As this is a vital part of that deck either to shuffle shards, I mean fragments. Let's call them shards anyways, as that's what they look like, and soul fragments is crazy to say every time. So, Spirit Jailer is vital to shuffling shards in initially, or to bounce and get more shards in the deck. You can join the memes. The other dual class card for shuffling shards into our deck is Soul Shear. It's a 2 mana spell to deal 3 damage to a minion, and shuffle 2 soul fragments into your deck. As mentioned in the reveal video, this is similar to Priest's Penance in a lot of ways. It targets a minion for 3 damage, and heals you but the heal from this is delayed a bit. However, as we'll see in a moment, there are some ways to use shards that are a lot more exciting than just healing for two, making this even more exciting than penance over the course of the game. That being said, without the upside from the rest of the synergy cards, I don't think this would see play in any current meta decks. The combination of Nether Breath with Moarg Artificer to clear a minion and heal for a bunch extra all at once or the discount possible to I-Beam, make sure they fit into the builds of meta decks right now. However, once decks can be modified to run a few pieces of the Soul Fragment package together, not only will updated versions of the current meta decks be interested in this card, but it might be enough to help control Handlock make a comeback, and perhaps even help control Demon Hunter climb into the meta. Soul Shear is an enabler for the meme deck we mentioned a moment ago, and when paired with a rather impressive Elik, we'll look at later in this review, it will be possible to get extra copies of this as well. Since it only targets minions, there's nothing bizarre we can set up with spell damage in this, as the Soulbound Ashtongue Treachery combo is exclusive to Wild, but it still earns a spot as a meme deck enabler. Both Demon Hunters and Warlocks got their own class-specific card to shuffle shards in as well, 
Let's look at Warlocks first. School Spirits is a 3 mana spell to deal 2 damage to all minions while shuffling 2 soul fragments into your deck. This is Volcanic Potion with a major upside. Volcanic Potions saw plenty of play while in Standard, so this should too. Zoo Warlock is too focused on taking control of the board to run an AoE like this, but both Galakron Warlock and Quest Warlock run Dark Skies and Crazed Netherwing. Due to the upside of healing later, and since Dark Skies is often used to clear an early board of aggressive minions, I think one of these decks would be happy to swap in a copy of School Spirits if they could. And since the new set seems to have quite a few small token generators coming with it, cheap board clears are going to be even more important. Alongside most of the rest of the Soul Fragment package, School Spirits should join the new meta. As for memes, there's nothing terribly exciting to do with this card by itself at the moment, but just as the others mentioned previously, this does enable our bouncing Soul Fragment meme deck, and we'll probably want every activator we can get to ensure the best outcome. So I've been alluding to some payoff cards to having Soul Fragments in your deck this whole time. There are a number of them. The first one for Warlocks is Void Drinker, a 5 mana 4 5 demon with taunt and a battle cry to destroy a soul fragment in your deck to gain plus 3 plus 3 in stats. Without any shards in your deck, it's like a sad shield of Galakrond, but if you've managed to shuffle a few soul fragments in before playing this guy, he's a 5 mana 7 8 taunt. It's an earth elemental without overload. All the current meta decks for Warlock would have quite a bit of a challenge running this. This is too slow for Zoo Warlock, and the Soul Fragment package overlaps with the Galakron package in Galakron Warlock. Quest Warlock could potentially run it if they could fit in enough shard shuffle cards, but with Plot Twist and the rest of their deck focused on drawing through the deck so quickly, there's a real risk that they would draw all the shards before dropping this, and a 4-5 taunt alone for 5 mana feels bad. This wouldn't quite make the cut for current meta decks, but dropping a 7-8 taunt on turn 5 in a control handlock feels great. I think the power of the Soul Fragment package will earn it a spot in the new meta, and this is a fine inclusion in it. Not only will Void Drinker fit well into our bouncing Soul Fragments meme deck as one of the payoffs, we can bounce this to heal it in a real pinch, but the legendary payoff card is what we really want to bounce but it might be a decent inclusion in our Philosophy Big Demon Warlock deck as well. As there wasn't another Big Demon announced for the Big Demon archetype, sadly it looks as though Big Demon Warlock will still be a meme deck. However, we will be playing it, and the heals from the Soul Fragment package and extra stall from this may be just what we need to pull off crazy shenanigans. The other class specific Soul Fragment payoff card for Warlocks is Shadowlight Scholar. She's a 3 mana 3 4 with a battle cry to deal 3 damage in exchange for destroying a soul fragment in your deck. A 3 mana 3 4 has become fairly common, but this 3 damage can take control of the board or push a bit of burst damage to the face. Since this damage can help take the board or go face, Zoo Warlock would love to run this if they could. However, the Spirit Jailer is the only activator they would be happy to run at the moment, and only one activator would make her too inconsistent, so she wouldn't quite fit into their current builds. Quest and Galakrond face the same issue, but with different activators. Sadly, Shadowlight Sculler wouldn't quite make the cut at the moment. This card doesn't blow me out of the water. But I do think its base stats and flexibility of the Battlecry makes it a contender for having a real impact. Shadowlight Sculler should be able to help a more control oriented version of Warlock climb its way into the new meta alongside the rest of the Soul Fragment package. But while she probably will join the Brewmaster meme decks we make with Soul Fragments as an intermediate payoff card, she doesn't actually enable the meme deck in any way. Unlike Void Drinker, she doesn't provide a significant stall, and Bouncing her only gives 3 extra damage with very little healing potential. Shadowlight Sculler herself doesn't inspire or enable any meme decks, so she doesn't earn meme status. Now before we look at the huge payoff card for soul fragments in both classes, 
Let's jump to Demon Hunter to see what their class specific shard cards are. Their class specific soul fragment generator is Marrow Slicer, a four mana, four two weapon with a battle cry to shuffle two soul fragments into your deck. This is a delayed true silver champion for Demon Hunters. Other than Flame Reaper, which almost never sees play at seven mana, this is the most aggressively statted weapon Demon Hunters have access to at the moment. That alone might make this worth running, but the heal from the shards and the payoff cards we'll look at in a moment make this a really impressive addition for Demon Hunters. Even after the nerfs, Warglaves of Azanoth still make the cut in some versions of Tempo Demon Hunter. This is partly due to the ability to remove multiple minions at once, but it's also partly due to the extra attack and durability of the weapon. If Tempo Demon Hunter had the option of running Marrow Slicer instead, especially since this can provide some additional heal, I think they would seriously consider swapping weapons. Marrow Slicer probably would be meta now. Based on just the first payoff card we'll look at alone, I feel pretty confident that a form or two of a Demon Hunter will pick up the Soul Fragment package, and this is too powerful of a card from the package to pass up, so Marrow Slicer will see play in the new meta as well. We can't double the battle cry on this, and while the weapon damage is slightly higher and lower cost than Demon Hunter's other options, I don't think that sets up any crazy burst damage other than with the Kael'thas ODK that already existed. However, the Bouncing Brewmaster meme deck is even more powerful in Demon Hunter, and this provides the fuel that enables that deck, so Marrow Slicer makes the cut for meme decks based on that. Now why do I think that the Soul Fragment package can make the cut in meta decks even though Demon Hunter has a lot of absurdly powerful cards? Partly due to this next card. Soul Shard Lapidary is a 5 mana 5-5 five five minion with a battle cry to give your hero plus 5 attack this turn if it destroys a Soul Fragment in your deck. Demon Hunters love hitting things with lots of face damage and this is a nice buff to that attack on a respectable body for 5 mana. Since Tempo Demon Hunter could afford to swap Blazing Battle Mage for Spirit Jailer and may be able to swap one or both of the Warglaves of Azanoth for Marrow Slicer without hurting their win rate, I could see some versions running Soul Shard Lapidary in place of or alongside Glaivebound Adept. While the 5 extra damage gets stuck on taunts, the 1 extra immediate damage and extra 1 health on the minion may help it make enough of an impact to earn a slot in the deck. And while she can still work great in a tempo style of deck in the upcoming meta, she's also a powerful card to pair with Aldrachi Warblades for efficient healing and removal or burst damage. With tools like this, we may actually see Control Demon Hunter back in the top tiers. As for meme decks, not only can we bounce her for ridiculous amounts of damage over several turns, but we can also use her with Eldrachi Warblades to heal and buy time for other meme decks that require a little bit of time to pull off, such as Chef Nomi Demon Hunter. She'll enable a few meme decks. The other Demon Hunter class specific Soul Fragment payoff card is Shard Shatter Mystic. She's a 3 mana 3 2 with a battle cry which reads, destroy a soul fragment in your deck to deal 3 damage to all other minions. This is the same effect as Duskbreaker from Kobolds and Catacombs, but uses a soul fragment rather than a dragon in hand to activate. It's also 1 mana cheaper, with the only downside being 1 less health. Duskbreaker was used a ton, and I imagine Shard Shatter Mystic will have a similar impact. The main challenge Shard Shatter Mystic has with seeing play in Demon Hunter is that the current meta decks are focused on owning the board with their own minions. Both Tempo and Token Demon Hunter would be committing Seppuku to include this, so it would not see play in the current meta. However, as has been the case with a number of other cards from the set, Shard Shatter Mystic would fit pretty nicely into a controlled Demon Hunter deck. Since there's enough cards in the set to make me think it could climb its way into the top 3 tiers, and this would be a great fit in the deck, I'm going to say this will be meta later. And with an AoE effect like this, we can cycle through our deck with Feast of Souls remarkably quickly, or make a massive Nithrandomus while clearing our opponent's board. 
We'll pair this with Cycle of Hatred in a meme deck or two. And now for the payoff card you've all been waiting for. The real reason to run the Soul Fragment Synergy package in both Warlocks and Demon Hunters? Soul Seologist Militia. Soul Seologist Militia is a 7 mana 5-5. Five five, so a terrible stat line for the cost. But wait. Her battle cry is to summon a 3-3 three three soul with Rush for each soul fragment in your deck. But wait, there's more. She doesn't destroy the soul fragments to make these release souls. No, she's just like Blastmaster Boom that you get to eat your cake and have it too. Okay, really though, this is an amazing payoff card for including the soul fragment package into your deck. With 12 shards possible for each class from activator cards without doing anything special to get any more, there will be lots of times where she'll summon a very wide board of rushing minions. Even if you've only played one activator before drawing her, or you draw her late so that you only have two shards left in your deck, she'll drop 11-11 in stats for seven mana. Much of the time, Militia is going to be a powerful swing turn. We might be able to get away with swapping in just enough cards in Tempo Demon Hunter to make Soul Seologist Militia great and still call it the same deck. The other meta Demon Hunter and Warlock decks would require a bit of revision to include enough Soul Fragment activators for her to make sense. She has a ridiculously powerful upside, and while it's not immediate face damage, I could see Tempo Demon Hunter including her to set up for their final push. Now once the set comes out, you better believe people are going to try out the entire Soul Fragment package to see what works. I imagine we'll see some meta deck lists that don't include all the shard cards available for each class, but I expect that most of them will include Sociologist Militia. And what will we do with Militia in meme decks? Well, the one we've been referring to this whole time will be one to bounce her with Youthful Brewmasters. And perhaps our opponent will think that we wouldn't bounce her again after we play her for the third time, so they might not kill her, and we can use Ancient Brewmaster to bounce her again for even more ridiculous value. Or we could just bounce one of the activator minions or payoff minions. Also, she summons a bunch of rush minions. They can die pretty reliably, so it wouldn't be too hard to pair her with Feast of Souls or set up for a great Nathrandomus. Perhaps we could use Soul Shear and Skull Spirits as our activators in a Warlock deck that uses her as a base to set up a Darkest Hour turn? That seems a bit wasteful, but there's a lot to try out with her. Let's meme. So that's all the Soul Fragment Synergy cards, but there are a couple more Warlock cards and two neutrals I'd like to look at before we finish out today's review. This next card is the Studies card we guessed Warlocks would get, Demonic Studies. As with the other studies, this is a 1 mana spell to discover a demon. The next demon you play will cost 1 less. And this goes across turns, so you could play this on 9 and play Lord Jaraxxus on 10 with enough mana to use his hero power right away. Since you have a choice between 3 demons, there's a decent chance you can discover a fairly cheap demon from this, making this a fair inclusion in Zoo Warlock. Playing this to set up for a Nightshade Matron dropping onto the board a turn early and drawing with Hand of Gul'dan is one way this could work out really well in the deck. Or just discovering one more demon to buff with Imprisoned Scrap Imp while paying no extra for him would be nice too. We get into the classic argument whether it's just better to run what you want from the start, but this is pretty good later in the game to generate a bigger threat and close out the game as well so I think it could make the cut. And in the future meta, we were really hoping a big demon warlock would get the support it needs to become a meta deck, but it's a bit questionable whether it'll get there. However, discovering the type of demon you're looking for at different stages of the game while discounting a demon you already run or just playing the one you discover is pretty powerful. I believe this will make the cut in one or two meta decks. And memes? Well, if playing Lord Jaraxxus and dropping an Infernal all together on turn 10 isn't enough for you, we will be playing Massive Demon Warlock, and we'll look for this to cheat out an Enhanced Dreadlord a turn early, or discover us another big demon to add to our pool for Kandrathad. 
If we don't like what we discover, it'll just chill in our hand until after we play Kenrithod Prime. Look forward to it. The last Warlock card is also the last dual class card between Warlocks and Priests. Raise Dead is a zero mana spell to deal three damage to your hero and return two friendly minions that died this game to your hand. If you like the minions you've been playing, why not take a little damage to get a couple extra copies to play out again? This is a great activator for Flesh Giant and Brittle Bone Destroyer we saw in previous reviews. And both classes have ways to recover from lost life fairly well. So in a deck with high value minions, this is great. And as a way to generate a few more minions for Scrap Imp to buff, this is pretty good as well. Resurrect Priest would be happy to run this right now, and Zoo Warlock could probably use it pretty effectively as well. Other priests generate a number of random minions they may not want to pay 3 health to bring back, and Galakrond Warlock would be a terrible match with this, but it would see play in Res Priest and maybe even in Zoo Warlock. And in the future meta, this will be a way for Quest Res Priest to reassert itself as a meta deck since this is an effective way for them to take damage even against opponents avoiding their face while generating even more convincing infiltrators or cartoon defenders. It'll be interesting. And this is the perfect tool to give us extra enhanced dreadlords with our big demon warlock deck. We just have to be careful not to run too many other minions, as that will endanger our raised dead pool. Fortunately, warlocks have a lot of spell-based clears, and we won't mind getting another crazed netherwing when we do. Now to look at a neutral card with a lot of potential, especially for combo and meme decks. Educated Elik is a 3 mana 3-4 with an effect to remember any spells played while it's on board. The death rattle is to shuffle the spells it remembered into your deck. This is really cool! In a buff or value oriented deck, this is a great way to generate some extra resources and avoid fatigue. Or, card draw spells could be cast together with a heal or generation card to help cycle through all the extra cards generated by this. Also, since it's a whenever a spell is played card, if a spell was used to kill this, you'll get a copy of that as well. Now, this also remembers any spells cast by your opponent as well, so it is a way to get some of their spells shuffled into your deck as well. But that's also a way opponents could sabotage what you're doing by shuffling a bunch of spells you can't use efficiently into your deck. For example, if a paladin plays 5 or 6 zero cost Librams, those could get shuffled into your deck, and you'd have to pay full cost for them while spending several turns just drawing 2 mana plus 1 plus 1 buffs, which is not ideal. This is also susceptible to silence, so to be good, you want to build your deck with a certain synergy, but you also have to hope that your opponent can't silence or transform it. While getting an extra Hand of a Doll in Murloc Paladin, an extra Metamorphosis in Tempo Demon Hunter, another Plot Twist and Nether Breath in Quest Warlock, or Brawl and Shield Block in Bomb Warrior would be nice. All of the current decks are built pretty streamlined without a need for something like this. The risk of useless spells from opponents paired with the challenge of getting value from this as well as the cost of sacrificing a card slot make this too difficult to run in current meta decks effectively. Once the expansion hits, the classes I could see as most likely to figure out an effective way to use this in a meta deck are Rogue and Warlock as both have quite a few card draw spells and a number of other spells they would be happy to have extra copies of. However, due to the awkwardness of pulling this off effectively, I don't see this making the cut in new meta decks either. Now one thing we can and will do with this is run it in a Togwaggle scheme deck alongside Secret Passage, a card we'll look at in depth later, and something else we're looking to get ridiculous value out of. We could go aggressive with Sinister Strikes, or go with Insane Value from Dragon's Horde, or aim to overwhelm the board with Shadow of Death on something of our own or our opponents. With Togwaggle's scheme on Educated Elec, we could avoid ever hitting fatigue and play some really crazy games. And that's just in Rogue. There's going to be a ton of stuff to try out with this sophisticated beast once it joins the game. 
And our last card for the day, we get a new friend for Wisp alongside Tiny Finn Murloc and Snow Flipper Penguin. Desk Imp is a zero mana 1-1 one, one demon who is ready to force opponents to concede. I mean, how can you possibly handle a zero mana 1-1? One, one? It's just too good. It's so good that none of the current meta decks could possibly handle having Desk Imp in them. Now, it's possible that Disciplinarian Gandling could figure out how to use this overpowered little guy in the new meta really effectively, but I think he'll shrink back in terror as well, so Desk Imp won't join the future meta decks either. Philosophy is just too ridiculous for this in the new meta. However, there will definitely be meme deck players courageous enough to try harnessing the power which is hidden within this OP 0 mana 1-1. One, one and they might even include him alongside the infamous Wisp. Meme deck opponents will be shaking in terror. The end is coming. And now for the quick reviews. Spirit Jailer would ride a magic carpet into the current meta, he'll lock down part of the new meta, and he's vital for our Brewmaster meme decks with soul fragments. Soul Shear wouldn't shear any minions in the current meta, but it should hold a fragment in the future meta and it will enable some soulful memes. School Spirits might brighten the skies in a current meta deck, will school a number of small aggro boards in the upcoming meta, and will cheer on our bouncing soul fragments meme deck. Void Drinker would be stuck in the void of the current meta, but should drink deep into the new meta, and he might gain just enough momentum to see play in big demon meme decks. Shadowlight Scholar is too engrossed in reading to join the current meta, but she should light up some enemies in the upcoming meta. Sadly, her meme inspiration and enablement thesis proposal was rejected. Marrow Slicer is so sharp that it would cut to the bone of the current and future meta decks, while slicing up opponents to meme decks as well. Soul Shard Lapidary would cut her way into current Tempo Demon Hunter decks, will polish off some new meta decks, and will engrave herself into the memories of meme deck opponents. Shard Shatter Mystic would shatter Tempo and Demon Hunter boards, but she won't miss out on the new meta, and she'll stick into a few meme decks. Soul Seologist Militia might make questionable observations in the current meta, but she'll release quite a few souls into the new meta, and opponents to meme decks will beg from the bottom of their souls for her to stop bouncing for more rush minions. Zoo Warlock players are brushing up on their demonic studies for the current and future metas, and Lord Jaraxxus is eager to show what he can do when Warlocks have this knowledge. Raise Dead is perfect for raising Priest's win rate in the current and future metas, as well as providing more Dreadlords for big Demon Warlock meme decks. Although Educated Elik has remarkable potential, he'll spend the current and future metas memorizing useless facts. However, Tons of meme decks will love having this sophisticated beast on the board. Desk Imp is too OP to join current or future meta decks, but courageous meme deck players will risk imploding the game by pairing him with Wisps. And that's a wrap. We're hoping to pump these reviews out in pretty quick succession leading up to the release, so drop a like if you enjoyed, and smash that subscribe button so you'll know when the next video comes out. You're awesome. Thank you for watching and have an awesome day. Hail to